Kaka isa pagsulong Narito tayo Para sa pagwawasto Pagdaluyong Narito tayo Para ang kalat-kalat Na puloy Magiging muok Na buhok Pagkakaisa Good afternoon, international comrades, at pagandang gabi naman po sa ating mga kababayan dyan sa Pilipinas. Welcome back again to the National Democratic Line Online School, Marxism, Leninism, and Marxism, Leninism, Maoism on Internationalism. So today, is a, uh, this is a special episode for every one of us as we are celebrating our first anniversary of uh, this, the National Democratic Line Online School. So um, uh, we are very glad to have you in this episode everyone and uh if you, if you would could you please uh, please share and uh invite more um kasamas and comrades to join the discussion as uh uh to celebrate with us our first anniversary episode ano? so uh before we start our main discussion um um we would like to call on po um uh, from the uh, international network of philippine studies si tita julie de lima to um to share a solidarity message for our first anniversary. Tita Julie. Okay, thank you. It is a pleasure to learn that ND Line Online has already completed one year of its fruitful existence. Congratulations for your brilliant efforts to beat the COVID threat by taking advantage of the time and opportunity to expand and consolidate your ranks by undertaking the ND Line online discussion series, at most of which you had Joma for your discussion. You asked insightful questions on the Marxist, Leninist, Maoist theory and practice from the most significant works of Marx, Engels and Engels, Lenin and Mao, as well as Joma's works on the theory and practice of the National Democratic Revolution in the Philippines. You've kept Joma busy for a whole year and made him very productive, so much so that with your series of webinars, together with all the other webinars following after yours, he had been able to fill a book of more than 700 pages in 2020. And by your association with him intellectually, you have helped to use and, and keep his mind sharp and alert. You have even helped to re-blacken his graying, silvering, and thinning, but now re-thickening hair, which, if I may observe from the great thinkers, ranging from Marx and Engels through Lenin to Bao, is a sign of intellect. I don't know, though, whether there is any scientific connection between hairiness and baldness, 
I only know from my empirical observation that the hairy apes are certainly less intelligent than balding humans. Seriously though, keep on with the ND line online, COVID or no COVID. Come what may, there's 5G to beat it and to serve you intellectual and practical pursuits. I look forward to your second anniversary. Long live ND line online. Long live Anakbayan Europe. Long live the Filipino people. Victory to the National Democratic Revolution. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Tita Judy, pa, uh, for your very inspiring message to us. Uh, thank you so much, po, um, <laughs> uh, with your international, uh, with your solidarity message for our first anniversary. Um, uh, thank you, po. Tita, uh, pwede na po i-off yung camera po para um, okay. mag-balance na yung ano. Thank you so much, Tita. Okay, ayan. thank you too. So, um, ayan. Uh, again, we are now uh, today as we celebrate the first anniversary again, uh, we will be discussing um, the third episode of the Marxism, Leninism, Maoism series on internationalism. So, um, uh, let, uh, without further ado, let's welcome um, uh, Tito Joma Season. Tito, kamusta po kayo? Kumusta na okay? Oh, okay na man. Uh, May maano po ba kayo sa ating, may onting few words po ba kayo para sa ating first anniversary? Of course, I wish to uh, give my warmest greetings to the MD Online School on the occasion of its uh, first anniversary. Ayan. Um, I'm fortunate to have been featured quite a number of times, uh, and uh, I have always enjoyed um, uh, the, the webinars under the auspices of the MD School uh, online. Thank you so much, Tito. Ayan. Uh, again, Tito Jo has been uh, mainly our get, uh, our speaker here for ND Line Online, and we are really grateful for it. And ayon, Tito, let's start our uh, discussion na, no? Para uh, let's get into it. So again, we will be discussing um, on internationalism today. You know? Just a basic context about this. The history of the international communist movement can be told by spelling out the outcome of the Manifesto of the Communist Party, which was laid down the which laid down rather the fundamental guiding principles of the working class. You know, in the revolutionary struggle up to the present. It has inspired and guided the great revolutionary victories of the communist and the working class since it was first pub published in February 1848. Uh, Karl Marx and Engels were commissioned by the Communist League in November 1847 to write the manifesto as a program. They wrote it from December 1847 to January 1948. So it was published in February 1848 before the outbreak of the February Revolution in France. The, mani the manifesto of the Communist Party laid out general principles of scientific communism. It challenged the bourgeoisie and other reactionary forces in Europe who intimidated the public with stories about ghosts of communism. It opposed the various types of unscientific socialism, those deceptive versions sold by the feudalist, by the party bourgeois, and the German idealist those sold by the shameless conservatives and bourgeois, and those naive in caring as social socialism. The manifesto was first published in German in Germany before the workers' uprising in 1848 in Europe. So, Tito, let's start the discussion with this question, Po. What is the relevance of the manifesto of the Communist Party in the judgment of the communists in Cologne in November 1852 and in the Paris Commune in 1871? As you correctly point out, the Communist Manifesto of the Communist Party, uh, finally titled the Communist Manifesto in 1872, was first 
published just before the workers' uprisings in 1848, but it had no influence on them. Nonetheless, it was relevant to these uprisings, as well as to the judgment of the communists in Cologne in November 1852, and so far as uh, it, the manifesto expressed and reflected uh, the historical background and reality of class struggle between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat in capitalist society. The Communist Manifesto had influence in the Paris Commune in 1871, and so far as the groups and members of the International Working Men's Association, the first international, under the well-known leadership of Karl Marx, were in the leadership and conduct of the Paris Commune. The brutal suppression of the workers' uprisings of 1848, the judgment against the communists in the Cologne trial in 1852, and the victory and eventual massacre, eventual massacre of the proletariat, communards in the Paris Commune of 1871, verify the bitter truth about the class struggle between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. The bourgeoisie would go to any extent to suppress any attempt of the proletariat to end the bourgeois class dictatorship and system of exploitation. Mm -hmm. So, um, Tito, what is the contribution of Lenin and Stalin on Marxism? Lenin made contributions to the further development of Marxism in the fields of philosophy, political economy, and social science. He extended the applicability of Marxism as a guide to revolutionary action uh, in the era uh, of modern imperialism and proletarian revolution. He built and led the first communist party that established the first socialist state through the great October socialist revolution. Stalin also made major theoretical and practical contributions to the further development of Marxism-Leninism. His greatest achievements included the successful socialist revolution and construction in the Soviet Union and the defeat of Nazi Germany and the fascist uh, Axis powers in World War II. But he also made certain errors that would subsequently be taken advantage of by the modern revisionist after his death. Lenin and Stalin were champions of proletarian internationalism. They opposed the social chauvinism, social pacifism, and social imperialism of the Second International. They established the Third International in 1919 in order to promote proletarian internationalism, cause the founding of communist parties in various countries, and advance the world proletarian revolution. I see. Uh, Tito, why do we say that the world proletarian revolution and the broad anti-imperialist movement uh, culminated in the uh, in simultaneous advancement of wars for national liberation in Indochina and the great proletarian cultural revolution in China from the 1960s up to the 1970s. By 1956, one third of humankind was already under the governance of communist and workers' parties in the Soviet Union, the Mongolian People's Republic, China, the East European countries and the People's Democratic Republic of Korea. And the national liberation movements under communist leadership uh, were growing stronger. But modern revisionism started to undermine and destroy socialism and the Soviet Union in 1956 under the anti-Stalin leadership of Khrushchev. The categorical defeat of US imperialism and victory of the Vietnamese and other Indo-Chinese peoples in 1975, and the great proletarian cultural revolution in China from 1966 to 1975 appeared as powerful developments to counter imperialism, revisionism, and reaction. But subsequently, the Dengish counter-revolution restored capitalism in China from 1976 onward. The Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, and the anti-imperialist movements in both developed and underdeveloped countries became confronted by the increase of capitalist powers, neoliberalism, state terrorism, and imperialist wars of aggression. I see. Tito, what then happened to the Third World um, International? What happened then to the Third International? The Third International was dissolved in 1943 
because its international executive committee was prevented by World War II from having prompt and effective communications with the communist and workers' parties in various countries. Thus, the principle became established that the aforesaid parties are fundamentally responsible for applying the theory of Marxism-Leninism in their respective countries. But the communists in China had the advantage of having common borders and continuing communications with the Soviet Union. I see. I see. How about ito? What is the basis of proletarian internationalism and solidarity? The basis of proletarian internationalism and solidarity is the common class interest of the proletariat against the bourgeoisie as class enemy. The Communist Manifesto called on all workers of all countries to unite in order to carry out class struggle and social revolution against the bourgeoisie. To the call of Marx, Lenin added the call on all oppressed nations and peoples to unite against monopoly capitalism in the era of modern imperialism and proletarian revolution. Obviously, there are varied concrete conditions in various countries which must be subjected to concrete analysis for the revolutionary practice to succeed under the guidance of the Marxist-Leninist universal theory uh, of the proletariat. That makes sense, Tito. No? That is right. Um, Tito, can you talk about the proletarian internationalism for the Communist Party of the Philippines? For the Communist Party of the Philippines, proletarian internationalism is as what I've said in response to the preceding question, but I can elaborate on certain points, like all workers of the world have a common interest and a common cause against imperialism as class enemy. Yeah. The workers of the world have a common interest in the new democratic revolution and in socialism, because this is in accordance with the rising social character of production through collective labor and the application of science and technology, and with the need to stop the monopoly bourgeoisie from extracting surplus value exploiting the workers and generating the crisis of overproduction, state terrorism, and wars of aggression. The workers of the world have a common cause in fighting the monopoly bourgeoisie in their respective countries, as well as the international monopoly bourgeoisie, be they divided into conflicting blocks or united in the United Nations and multilateral agencies against the proletariat and the oppressed nations and peoples. The victory of socialism in any country of the world cannot be secure until capitalism is defeated on a world scale. I see. Um, Tito, um, can you talk about naman po or about solidarity work? What is solidarity work, Tito? Under the principle of proletarian internationalism, there can be solidarity and practical cooperation of the communist and workers' parties of the world in order to realize and advance the world proletarian revolution under the guidance of the universal theory uh, of the proletariat. Regardless of ideology, religion, non-exploitative class, race, and gender, there can also be moral and political solidarity and practical cooperation among the peoples and nations and their various social institutions and people's organizations against imperialism and all forms of reaction, bilateral partnerships, international federations, alliances, and other formations of anti-imperialist and democratic solidarity can be built. There can also be solidarity relations among states and countries on a diplomatic basis of mutually respecting their independence and equality, promoting human rights, peace and development, and opposing oppression and exploitation state terrorism, and wars of aggression. The diplomatic relations should not be used for imperialist purposes and countering the revolution of the sovereign people. Yes, I agree with you. I think solidarity work is something that we should all do. And no, Tito. Um, on the next question, naman, Tito, um, uh, what are po the basic principles that guide proletarian parties? Let me uh, mention uh, uh, what I would consider the most important uh, principles. The proletarian party must be guided by the universal revolutionary theory of the proletariat. Uh, it must apply it correctly on the concrete conditions of the country where it wages revolution. 
it must serve as the advanced detachment of the working class and must carry out the historic mission of building socialism. It must wage revolution to overthrow the state power of the bourgeoisie and establish a socialist state. It must emancipate not only the working class, but also the other exploited classes. Mm. It must carry out socialist revolution and construction to defeat imperialism and thereby advance towards communism. It must oppose imperialism, revisionism, and all reaction. It must adhere to and uh, practice proletarian internationalism and realize the solidarity of all communists and workers' parties, all peoples and nations, and all peoples' organizations. Right, that's right, Tito. So, with that being said, Tito, no, what is our responsibility to the anti-imperialist United Front and the wide network of solidarity allies? The Filipino people and the revolutionary forces are self-reliant in the revolutionary struggle for national and social liberation against foreign monopoly capitalism and the local exploiting classes of big compradors, landlords, and bureaucrat capitalists. By waging revolutionary struggle, they fulfill their duty of contributing to the strengthening of the anti-imperialist united front and the wide network of solidarity allies. At the same time, they are grateful to the anti-imperialist united front and all solidarity allies for their moral and political support and any amount, direct or indirect, material assistance. They urge all anti-imperialist forces and solidarity allies uh, to win ever greater victories in their anti-imperialist and democratic struggles and thereby advance the direction in uh, advance in the direction of socialism and extend greater support to all revolutionary forces in the world. Yeah. Yes. Tito, there's a thing that is called proto-diplomatic and diplomatic work. Can you can you please share what are these po? The National Democratic Front of the Philippines has been engaged in proto-diplomatic relations with foreign governments like the Norwegian, Dutch, and other governments in connection with the peace negotiations with the Manila government, even if said foreign governments do not explicitly declare that they are dealing with the NDFP as an agency of the underground People's Democratic Government in the Philippines. In contrast, there have been instances when socialist and anti imperialist governments have received official delegations of the People's Democratic Government, whether these delegations be of the uh, CPP or the NDFP at the same time. These relations amount to diplomatic relations between governments, even when these relations are not publicly announced as diplomatic. Right, I see. So, Tito, how does the Communist Party of the Philippines form relations to foreign countries and governments then? The CPP forms relations with foreign countries and governments through its counterpart party on the basis of comradely relations under proletarian internationalism or on the basis of anti-imperialist solidarity. The CPP has an international department that deploys CPP representatives and delegations for the purpose of developing relations with foreign communists and workers' parties and national liberation movements. I see, I see. So, Tito, um, uh, what are the root causes of forced migration of Filipino to foreign countries in this topic? Uh, because of the underdevelopment, high unemployment, and widespread poverty in the Philippines, more than 10 million or more than 21% of the Philippine labor force of 45.9 million uh, as of July 2021, uh, excuse me, 2020, have been forced to migrate to foreign countries in order to seek jobs. Another 10.9 million are unemployed but stay in the Philippines. It is the policy of the reactionary government to export cheap uh, labor in the form of live men and women, instead of developing the country through land reform and national industrialization. The root causes of the forced migration are the high rate of exploitation by the foreign monopoly capitalists, the big compradors, landlords, mm. or corrupt civil and military officials, 
dependence of the economy on the export of raw mineral ores, agricultural products, low value added semi manufacturers and cheap labor in exchange for foreign manufacturers, ever widening trade and budgetary deficits and the mounting burden of public debt and debt service payments. I see. Ano tito, these are um, these problems that you have stated. No, what is the uh, what uh, since you've explained it, po, no? So what is now the relevance of proletarian internationalism and the work of the party among our compatriots compatriots abroad? Proletarian internationalism and an anti-imperialist solidarity are relevant mm -hmm. and highly important and urgent in the work of the CPP among Filipino compatriots because they need the support and assistance of communist and workers' parties and people's organizations and institutions in fighting for the democratic rights and welfare of the overseas Filipinos. The overseas Filipinos, uh, the overseas Filipino workers uh, in particular get the more difficult, dif dirtier and more dangerous jobs but get lesser pay and have lesser rights than the citizens of their host countries. They are also the target of national chauvinism, racial discrimination, and fascism, which are now escalating because of the worsening crisis of the capitalist ruling system. There is therefore the need for the various organizations of overseas Filipinos to unite and cooperate with the communist and workers' parties and the people's organizations and institutions in their host countries. The CPP and the NDFP have been active and successful in availing of the sense of proletarian internationalism of the working class and the anti-imperialist solidarity of the broad masses of the people in the host country. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much, Tito. I think that uh, that leads us, to, uh, that is the last question for our discussion or on our main discussion for today. To our audiences, to our live viewers and um, watching right now, uh, if you do have any questions in mind, um, our floor is now opening for the for your questions uh, to be sent. No, Just drop it down sa ating comment section so we can send it to Tito and have it answered by him. So, uh, uh, Tito, while we wait for the the questions to be sent out from, uh, from our audiences, I think uh, uh, we should go to a quick break. Um, for our break, po, we will be having Gintong Aral. Um, this is a video of Gintong Aral by Paul Galang. So um, let's watch this first as we wait for your questions. Thank you so much. Sulatan ng tanunin si Gulayat ni David Sa China'y pagtanggol pambansang karagatan Sa manlulubig bayay di pasisigil Diyos ko, Diyos ko, samahan mo kami Labanan ang demonyong mapangapi May gintong aral mula sa Vietnam Nang palayasin ang ibong mandaragi Nang magigiting na bayaning mga taong bayan Sa manandakot na dayo'y nagpakalsi Diyos ko, Diyos ko, samahan mo kami Labanan ang demonyong mapangapi Pating nga unang kakarungan Sa buong payan, taas ka maong nalindigan Ang mga aliping sigaw ay kalayaan Kalayaan, kalayaan, kalayaan Patirang masa sa panahon ng taghirap at tagtum Wakas sanang kaguluhan 
trapo ang pasimuno, karahasan, red tagging at korupsyon. Diyos ko, Diyos ko, samahan mo kami, labanan ang demonyong mapangapi. Nakaraan ng pabagsaki ng diktador na malupi At ipakat din at takot kilos ang mamamayan Sa bandong hugas na berdugong mabagsik Diyos ko, Diyos ko, samahan mo kami Labanan ang demonyong mapangapi Patingaw ng katarungan Magundong sa daigtigan, taas ka maong nanindigan, ang mga alipin si kaway kalayan, kalayan, kalayan. Labanan ang demonyong mapangapi Diyos ko, Diyos ko, samahan mo kami Labanan ang demonyong mapangapi na mga magsasaka, agricultural workers at mangisda lumad ang biktima ng pamamaslang sa ilalim ni Duterte hindi pakasali ang mahigit dalawampung libong biktima ng kampanya kontra droga. Ang pagsasaka ay marangal na gawain hindi po ito gawain terorismo o hindi kami terorista. Sa katunayan, kami, ang mga manggagawang agrikultural, manginisda, ang nagpapakain ng mamamayang Pilipino. Kaya dapat kami ay pinibigyan ng pagpapahalaga. Dito nagbuwis ng buhay ang labing tatlong martir ng Mindola Masakya. Linggo, isang linggo na nagkampuhan ang mga magtasaka sa pangunguna ng kilosang magpupukit ng Pilipinas doon sa harap ng noe tinatawag na Ministry of Agrara Reform. Mahalip, natugunan ang lihitimo at makatarong ang kahilingan ng mga magkasaka, masaker, bala ng kamatayan, ang itinugon ng rehimeng U.S. Aquino. So patuloy po ang ating pakitibaka, kahilingan, kapwa, sa pagpapatupad ng tunay na reforma sa lupa, na ang sentral layunin ay lipin pa maagi ng lupa para sa ating mga magkasaka dahil doon mabibigyan ang makabuluhan, mas makabuluhan na paghangat ng katarungan sa labing tatlong martir ng Mendiola Masakir. Mabibigyan lamang kung ngayon ng katarungan ang mga labing tatlong martir biktima ng Mendiola Masakir at iba pa ang mga kaso ng Masakir kasama ng Tagay Masakir kung saan siya ang nabiktima ang napaslan sa patuloy po natin ang pakitiba.
Ayan, so we are now um, back again sa ating discussion on uh, um, Marxism, Leninism, Maoism on international solidarity. A while ago, we have um, have a main discussion and now we are on the segment of question and answer. Um, thank you so much for everyone tuning in and uh, who've sent their questions. A uh, few shout outs to uh, Satya Jeet Dimaano, Shani De Guzman, Hampus Grenader, Concepcion Empeno, Hey Daisy, Leo Cadio Pelletina, Hey Paro Paro, Hey Arish Grenada, uh, Candy Sario, uh, Zard Sabalia, and uh, ayan, and uh, kay Anya Ko, Maeng, and Ramon. Yan. Thank you so much for watching and sa ating 22 viewers live uh, today. So ayun, um, Tito, um, there's already a question sent to us. There's a, there's a lot, no? Thank you so much for being interactive today. Um, I think let's jump now to the first question po. So our first question is, how to protect the revolutionary movement, the Communist Party, and the masses from leadership chauvinism like that developed in Juche with supreme leadership, and etc.? Sorry, Tito. I think you're muted po, Tito. Okay. Okay. Sige. Go ahead. Sige. Uh, so, uh, as I was saying, uh, I would like to look into the terms first of the inquirer, uh, such terms as leadership chauvinism, uh, that is due to uh, due chain. But I would like to um, um, consider the term juche. Juche means self-reliance. In uh, Juche is the Korean word for self-reliance. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, uh, there are uh, distinguishing characteristics of the um, uh, leadership in Korea, Korea in, the, in the Democratic People's Republic, Republic of Korea, uh, with the uh, grandfather being the Kim Il Sung being the leader, and then the son uh, Kim Jong Il, and then Kim Jong Un, and the grandson becoming the um, um, uh, the leader. Uh, well, uh, uh, some people would think uh, uh, this is uh, dynastic and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, but chauvinism, um, in the sense of uh, uh, being over assertive about one's sovereignty, I would not uh, blame the uh, the Korean people because you have to understand um, uh, the. Uh, the harsh attacks made by the U.S. in launching its war of aggression on Korea from, from 1951 to 53. Uh, millions of Koreans were killed. Um, and um, uh, Korea would have lost, uh, uh, DPRK would have been entirely uh, 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 wiped out without uh, 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 getting the support of the Chinese volunteers, 
and um, so um, terrible acts were, uh, were committed by U.S. Uh, imperialism, and uh, the U.N. was even used to attack uh, Korea. So they are. Uh, it is understandable why why they are assertive about their uh, national sovereignty and independence. And I find nothing wrong. I, I don't find anything wrong with the with self-reliance as a principle. Uh, one can be self-reliant without being chauvinist. Uh, one can also be um, uh, self-reliant and at the same time being internationalist. So um, we really have to understand the uh, um, uh, concrete conditions in Korea, their history, and uh, uh, certain special characteristics, because you see, uh, the Kim family, um, uh, uh, this uh, series of uh, leaders coming from the same family uh, was even were even anticipated by the father of um, of Kim Il Sung as a, um, a national as a pat patriotic leader, and um, considering that this family has been engaged in uh, struggle for uh, uh, so long, and uh, the members of this family were engaged in the development of the Korean revolutionary struggle, it is to be expected um, uh, that uh, their family enjoys such a high prestige. In the same manner that uh, Let's say MacArthur, you know, mm -hmm. who, although he does not represent a dynasty, would be gen would be venerated by uh, generations of uh, Filipinos who uh, who would think that um, they uh, MacArthur uh, uh, represented uh, um, certain good things like you know the propaganda. There is the propaganda line that the Philippines was saved. Uh, or from the Japanese by MacArthur. So, and um, um, from generation to generation until uh, I think uh, until the 1960s, uh, uh, MacArthur would be adulated. It would only be elected no? uh, president. He would have been elected president in the Philippines uh, before, the, before the rise of the National Democratic Movement or resurgence of the National Democratic Movement in the 1960s. So that's it. Then the, the peculiarity that the Kim family has played a really um, a major role in the Korean revolutionary struggle from generation to generation. But uh, with regard to the term uh, uh, Juche, I don't find any problem with it. And I don't think that it is necessarily the source what, of what is being uh, uh, described as uh, uh, chauvinism or chauvinism of the leadership, something like that. No? So uh, I hope I have given some clarity, no? uh, even if it may not completely satisfy the inquirer. I see, I see. All right, Tito, um, let's proceed to the second question. No? Another question is, can you please name the countries that are now in a socialist system? Well, after the uh, uh, disappearance of the two biggest socialist countries, uh, countries that were once upon a time considered uh, socialist without doubt, like the Soviet Union under Lenin and Stalin, no? and uh, uh, China under Mao, uh, and, um, and then the, uh, after the recognition of the problem of provisionism as being the root cause of um, of uh, uh, the restoration of capitalism. Now you have just uh, 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 we have you have countries that avow themselves to be socialist, and uh, they are on smaller scale. Uh, these are countries like uh, um, uh, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, Cuba, uh, even Vietnam still claims to be uh, uh, socialist and. Um, faintly, uh, Laos, uh, being smaller countries probably, also make uh, make a, a claim. And of course, uh, you have the uh, products of the pink um, 
and the big revolution in uh, Latin America, like Venezuela, uh, Bolivia, and so on. They claim to be socialist, no? Now, um, let us uh, consider certain criteria for calling uh, certain countries socialist, or how certain countries claim to be socialist. In uh, the DPRK uh, and uh, Cuba, def definitely uh, public ownership, the means of production, uh, is, uh, is still dominant. No? And uh, the parties uh, ruling uh, the system uh, uh, is the Communist or Workers' Party, the com the, and uh, it... Uh, uh, assert itself as the party of the proletariat. So uh, I think uh, DPRK and, um, and uh, uh, Cuba have the highest prestige in claiming to be socialist. No? Um, but uh, they have certain weaknesses. No? And um, it's still uh, a matter of struggle for socialism to prevail. If socialism could be overthrown in uh, uh, the Soviet Union and um, in China, there is also that possibility, no? But the fact is, uh, socialism, uh, elements of socialism still exist in these countries. Now, if we are so uh, strict about, so about, uh, about the term socialism, uh, well, <laughs> uh, the, you can always find a number of points no? to say that these countries are not socialist. But anyway, these are the countries that have, in terms of public ownership of the means of production, uh, the claim to working class uh, uh, rule in society, and of course, uh, uh, the social, you, know, you must consider also the social services made available. Cuba is well known for providing social services, despite the its limitations and also in, the, in Korea. And uh, um, uh, when I speak of social services, that includes, you know, free education at all levels. You know? uh, so, and uh, uh, of course the content, uh, this content of the culture is quite different from the content of uh, uh, culture and education, say in the Philippines or in the United States, you no? Know? Yes. Uh, the spirit of, of of upholding working class leadership and uh, um, liberating the press and so on and so forth uh, in their history as well in the case of other countries. Now in the case of um, Vietnam, um, uh, some Maoist parties will say, oh, Vietnam was already uh, at the core corrupted by Soviet modern revisionism because it had uh, this uh, revisionism and its influence. And then um, soon after the victory of uh, Vietnam, it relied so much on Japanese investments, and later on, uh, currently, the U.S. is uh, is uh, making a big attempt to uh, invest more in uh, in Vietnam, especially as uh, the U.S. is now trying to ship uh, certain plants, you know, from China uh, to other to Southeast Asian countries. Now, in the case of um, Venezuela, well, it had the advantage of uh, of uh, um, having uh, rich oil resources, and it could uh, finance housing, education, and so on. But uh, from Chavez to the present regime, I don't think that they have been able to um, uh, they have been able to uh, transform. Uh, uh, private ownership completely, yeah? private ownership the means of production. Um, there is also the element of, of corruption, no? and, uh, and, and the use, misuse of uh, public funds by um, bureaucrat capitalists. And uh, what about the case of Bolivia? Well, uh, that's why uh, now and then you have uh, coup, uh, coup uh, successful coup and unsuccessful coup attempts. That means to say uh, the question of political power is not settled. The working class uh, is, not, uh, is not securely 
installed, no? despite the overwhelming majority of the uh, non mestizos the, the, I mean to say, the uh, uh, the, um, the mestizos are still a powerful force, yeah, economic and political. No, that's why uh, Evo Morales uh, could be a shut out. Uh, the the um, the so-called socialist states uh, uh, that resulted from the so-called social democratic pink revolution are even much weaker than, let's say, DPRK and uh, Cuba. Cuba is the strongest. Uh, for six decades already, it has withstood uh, all sorts of uh, uh, U.S. attacks and uh, all kinds of embargoes. And uh, and uh, Cuba is only 90 kilometers yeah, from Florida, so you can see how uh, how uh, strong it has been. And um, well, uh, the the, I, the CPP and the NDF maintain good relations with TPRK, uh, Cuba, um, it has uh, friendly, friendly relations of solidarity with uh, um, uh, Venezuela and Bolivia. Mm. So, uh, the, you know, the in the struggle for the liberation by the Vietnamese people, uh, the uh, uh, National Democratic Movement had a, uh, 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 undertook militant actions no? to support the, the Vietnamese struggle. Oh. And um, that's a good basis for uh, 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 restarting good relations uh, with uh, Vietnam. Uh, in the early 1960s, the, the Viet relations between the Philippine Revolutionary Movement and Vietnam was strong. So you, you have, uh, I've given you uh, some um, amount of measure huh, how wow. socialist the certain countries are. I see. Thank you for that, Tito. I, um, the next question naman from our audience, ano? Sabi po, uh, this is another question from... Um, Cheney de Guzman, uh, she asked, uh, is it true that communism will only be met if majority of countries in this world will have a socialist state? Uh, there is a speculative question. When is the withering of the state uh, mm -hmm. uh, in socialism uh, to be accomplished for communism to arise? Eh? That's the question. The quest the, that uh, question has been... Um, uh, answered uh, uh, in a uh, in a prognostic way, no? Um, well, uh, in the course of the uh, in the course of the uh, great proletarian cultural revolutionary uh, great proletarian cultural revolution in China, uh, there was the there was the statement that. Uh, um, uh, U.S. imperialism was moving towards uh, total collapse, and um, and socialism was marching uh, towards uh, uh, world victory. I think that was an over uh, over optimistic uh, statement because the GPCR itself would be uh, would be effectively countered by the Dengist counter revolution, but uh, it was. Uh, that that um, uh, that kind of statement uh, indicated that while imperialism exists, uh, 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 the the defenses, uh, the need for a state and defenses against imperialism cannot be done away with. So you cannot wither away the state, no? so long as imperialism exists. The international bourgeoisie will always unite, even if when they are divided, they will unite to attack the proletariat uh, when they have uh, it has the chance if the if the life of capitalism is uh, in danger the bourgeoisie would unite eh? um, the proletariat can take advantage of the splits and even wars between bourgeois countries or between imperialist countries um, uh, you will um, uh, uh, you would you uh, you must see that uh, 
uh, the, the biggest socialist countries arose because of inter-imperialist wars. And if you look back to the Paris Commune, because two bourgeois countries were fighting, France and uh, Prussia, uh, two bourgeois states were fighting, the Paris Commune could arise. But you will see that uh, uh, to destroy the commune, uh, the, the French and the Prussian bourgeoisie uh, collaborated in order to uh, attack the Paris Commune and destroy it, uh, uh, did not allow it to last long. And um, uh, it is in the, well, uh, when uh, the October Socialist Revolution won, uh, remember that uh, several interventionist uh, uh, armies were sent by the international bourgeoisie uh, to uh, attack uh, the Soviet Union. And also uh, the, the um, there was in the Cold War, you will see how the attempt of the US, you can see the attempt of the US to uh, line up all capitalist powers to uh, make a counterattack on uh, the combination of uh, the Soviet Union and China. So this is an epochal struggle between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat, which, which, will, which will not be settled in, uh, in a short period of time. I would expect um, uh, that in the rest of the 21st century, um, capitalism would get into uh, more serious crisis, more wars, and, this, and this, uh, the, the uh, socialism will make a resurgence. The resurgence of socialism can arise within the next 25 years. Um, uh, you know, there has been a big setback uh, of, since 1991, but since 2008, um, the world capitalist system has been in serious trouble, and uh, uh, anti-imperialist and democratic struggles have spread. And then with, uh, the, uh, with science and technology, making more social the character of production, distribution, and communications, you see, at the same time, the growth of the proletariat and uh, the quicker means of communications for people to, um, to get informed and uh, uh, to get informed and understand what they need to do. Well, of course, such means of communications uh, start, out, start out as uh, things under the control of the bourgeoisie. Yeah? Uh, and uh, the, the bourgeoisie is the first to use the means of communication to uh, delude and mislead the people. No? But ultimately, such means of communication, uh, such as what we are doing now. Yeah? Uh -huh. uh, initially, video conferences were used by big businessmen, by the corporates. No? Now, uh, we, uh, the we, the we, the fuapaloi, you know, the common masses now use... Uh, <laughs> This, uh, this method of communication. So um, Lenin only had, uh, uh, had to rely only on the railways, no? No, we are rely relying on, uh, on uh, the proofs of quantum physics, uh, which includes all these uh, devices that we have now. Yes, oh, that's really great, Tito. Um, uh, proceeding to Tito to the next question. Um, um, and sabi po, uh, can the CPP, and other socialist country with legitimate causes can still be allied to a former socialist or communist countries that are now revisionist, for example, uh, uh, capitalists like China and Russia. Oh, yes. Uh, the, the CPP uh, can, can always, I have already mentioned that CPP and NDF have, have already had good relations with countries that uh, are uh, asserting and fighting for their national independence and who who have uh, at the least as socialist aspirations and who have uh, certain uh, which have uh, certain uh, socialist characteristics now um, the uh, but the, with regard to the former socialist uh, uh, countries uh, there is the possibility because they are in contradiction with US imperialism uh, 
But there are certain concrete uh, conditions, for instance, uh, how can the CPP relate to the Communist Party of China and, uh, and uh, the Chinese government, uh, uh, even if it calls itself a socialist, no? uh, when they are uh, doing aggression against, uh, against the Philippines. No? Um, uh, the, the, uh, the revolutionaries would be in a bad fix. If they, if they would support a country that takes over the West Philippine Sea, no? But if in the future the Chinese would back down, no? Um, they're pushed back and uh, by circumstances, uh, and they apologize and they pay for the damage that they have caused, no? <laughs> to, to the marine environment and uh, they pay for back rent, no? And uh, so, uh, and those are, because, you know, China have had border troubles before on land, no, between the Soviet, uh, with uh, the, the Soviet Union, but those, it seems like those problems were solved. And um, um, uh, at any anyway, at any rate, uh, with regard to, uh, to the to Russia and the um, and the other broken down republics of the former Soviet Union, when well, um, uh, there is always a possibility. That even as they may remain no longer socialist, the, con their contradictions with imperialist powers will uh, con persuade them uh, to relate to revolutionary forces in the Philippines, revolutionary forces as well as the people of the Philippines. So, and you cannot never tell uh, whether uh, socialism will go back to these countries like the form whether the Soviet Union will be reconstituted, no? Or China will become socialist again. Because you see, um, uh, new things like epochal revolutions do not advance on a straight line. Take a look at the bourgeois, liberal bourgeois revolution, mm -hmm. which was um, um, done in a categorical way by the French Revolution, remember? Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So. Uh, in just a few years, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, French liberal regime uh, uh, would uh, wobble and um, uh, the, the, the revolutionaries themselves make mistakes, mm -hmm. like uh, Robespierre making the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the terror and then you have the Thermidorian reaction of Napoleon. Napoleon would uh, engage in empire building, and there would be restoration of the monarchy. Okay, mm -hmm. it would only be in in the, in most of the 19th century. Uh, France uh, was uh, was on a descent uh, it, from uh, its ambition of having a liberal democratic government. It would only be in the 20th century, in the second decade, when when there would be universal suffrage uh, in elections. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, the, even the bourgeois democratic revolution uh, could not advance. Uh, there are ups and downs. Mm -hmm. So that is the case. And uh, uh, who knows? There would be a socialist restoration in the in in the Soviet Union and China. Yes. And that, that's the best thing that can happen because imperialism begets socialism. Mm -hmm. uh, in a manner of speaking, uh, capitalism is always going into a worse crisis of overproduction. Yeah. And the logical, the logical society to establish is socialism after, uh, after, uh, um, after capitalism breaks down. So, breaks yeah. down. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Ayun. Uh, next question naman dito. Um, uh, I think this one is from George uh, uh, sent through the private chat. Sabi niya po, Tito Jo, could you please describe what influence, what influence Chinese mining, fishing, and lumber companies have had on the Filipino struggle? Have the Chinese social imperialists made any attempts to assist the U.S. Duterte regime in defeating the new democratic revolution? Well, the Chinese imperialists are doing terrible things on the Philippines with regard to mining, fishing, and lum lumber companies. Um, so, uh, with regard to uh, uh, Chinese mining, um, 
So there are many corporations uh, serving China, mm -hmm. and uh, they um, uh, uh, they uh, take out mineral ores without even the, the recording because of their, the complicity of lo lo corrupt local officials as well as the uh, the uh, 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 connivance of the Duterte regime. Um, uh, a lot more of mineral ores uh, are being taken out of the Philippines than recorded. Um, uh, precious metals like gold, no? Okay. And uh, gold, which is uh, an important uh, uh, conductor in electronic equipment, they are shipped out, no? They are, uh, they are helicoptered out and brought to Chinese ships. And you know, even topsoil is being taken out because uh, uh, there are elements in um, uh, the topsoil uh, uh, which is taken away can uh, can be used for making those artificial islands, as well as uh, that there are certain topsoil which contains um, um, uh, rare earth metals, uh, and um, so uh, the the. Uh, uh, Chinese mining companies are having a feast, no? Um, uh, they're taking uh, so much out of the Philippines, uh, far more than, uh, than we can know. And what about fishing? Uh, Duterte makes little, no? uh, minimizes the importance of fishing. Well, we are now importing fish. We are an archipelagic, archipelagic country. We are now importing fish from the Chinese because the Chinese use boats that uh, sort of uh, suck the fish, like vacuum cleaners. You've seen pictures of uh, uh, large nets. Um, um, so uh, the, uh, the, the Chinese fishing fleet uh, uh, is uh, taking away uh, so much fish that our fishermen, and they, they uh, because of the uh, Chinese presence in the West Philippine Sea, Filipino fishermen are being prevented from fishing. And of course, uh, 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 logs are continue to be exported. Uh, so the, the Philippines, uh, the Philippine natural resources are rich, but uh, the, they have been taken advantage of first by the re Japanese reconstruction, then the newly industrialized countries also made use of the Philippines um, in, uh, in the exploitation of natural resources. And with China uh, becoming rapidly a, a huge capitalist country, uh, it has been able to uh, suck out no? uh, so much of our natural resources. Um, now, um, have the Chinese uh, social imperialists or uh, the Chinese imperialists, they, they don't even want to pretend, they, they, their pretension to socialism is so thin, they don't even mention it uh, unless you press. Uh, uh, so uh, it's e e more accurate to say simply that they are imperialists, not even social imperialists. Uh, social imperialists are imperialists who pretend to be socialists. And uh, only once in a while when they uh, would the Chinese say, ah, we are socialists with Chinese characteristics. What they actually mean is they are socialists in quotes with capitalist characteristics. That's, so that's Chinese imperialism. Now, um, China, of course, is in cahoots with uh, Duterte, but they have seen the low quality eh, of Duterte. He's, uh, he's a puppet of the cheapest kind. So what China did was to fool Duterte uh, with promises of loans, uh, loans with high interest then, um, loans to the extent of $24 billion for hundreds of projects. Now, but they require Duterte, China requires Duterte to sell out more outrightly, more blatantly. Uh, but Duterte hesitates, huh? at least he, uh, 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 he, has, um, um, he has some amount of sense, at least of the uh, uh, city gangster, no? uh, city, uh, city gang chief. No? At least he knows that he, he signs away uh, completely the West Philippine Sea. Uh, he's, 
he signs a document which says that the West Philippine Sea belongs to China, then uh, he's down to zero. At least he has that uh, sense. So, but China <laughs> has noticed that Duterte is a is a little. Uh, um, you can push Duterte around. Yeah? Mm. So you promise 24 billion, you get a, you after four years you get uh, some two projects. Yeah? Uh, one in Cagayan and another in in, in Chico Dam and another in uh, 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 south of Manila, no? Um, some two dam projects. Um, uh, up, so now Duterte has noticed that he has been fooled, no? But mm. Duterte has um, uh, overestimated China's support for him. Um, and so he would even say, if my if my uh, soldiers no longer uh, uh, no longer support me, then I can turn to China to keep me in power. He said that publicly without shame, no. And um, um, Duterte has benefited from relationship with uh, China officially in terms of getting. Uh, some loans, but not all the loans that he has expected. And then um, uh, there are also loans being granted to dummy corporations like those owned by uh, Dennis Oi. Huh? Uh, so this is a China Duterte dummy. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I heard that uh, um, uh, what Duterte steals from the public treasury and from the pub, pub, from private companies, he deposits them in some Chinese banks in Shanghai and Canton, no? And uh, aside from depositing uh, um, other amounts in Europe <laughs> and in the Caribbean yeah. islands. So that's Duterte trying to imitate Marcos. Um, so um, uh, at the same time, Duterte uh, makes money not only in official transactions with uh, uh, ch the Chinese government and Chinese corporations, but also with the triad uh, criminal syndicates uh, in drug smuggling. So Duterte has become the supreme drug lord in the Philippines uh, in combination of the uh, drug smugglers uh, of the um, Chinese syndicates. So now in certain, in certain uh, events, you would notice that uh, China, in the, uh, when there was the so-called Marawi siege, China donated some weapons. And it is well reported that China delivers um, um, the light, the light type of, uh, uh, of weapons. Um, but the soldiers prefer the American-made uh, uh, weapons. So uh, the corrupt military officials uh, uh, sell the extra weapons, mostly Chinese made, uh, to in the black market. Um, but uh, you will notice there that uh, China has begun to deliver weapons. Um, China is uh, uh, is capable of um, uh, supporting a reactionary regime. Uh, oh, against a national liberation movement, if it suits China. In Sri Lanka, remember, uh, the Chinese assisted the uh, reactionary Sri Lankan government to destroy the Tamil, the Tamil movement. Yeah? Uh, China provided the uh, air surveillance and the weapons for attacking the areas of the Tamil uh, national liberation movement. But so far, China has avoided direct. Uh, um, it is the U.S. which is uh, which has been the more uh, conspicuous and consistent um, uh, partner of, uh, of uh, Duterte in trying to suppress the revolutionary movement. As a matter of fact, uh, this is Duterte trying to benefit from his puppetry to two imperialist powers. He gets the weapons, most of the weapons, to try to destroy the revolutionary movement, and that's how he sat, sat, tries to satisfy the U.S. Mm -hmm. And uh, but in making uh, a lot of uh, money in shady ways, 
relationship uh, uh, with China uh, serves Duterte uh, well, no? That's from his viewpoint, no? Uh, at the expense of the Filipino people. Um, the uh, Duterte now is showing, trying to show more loyalty to the U.S. than before, because he's still in the U.S. for arms to uh, attack the revolutionary movement. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the U.S. is trying to uh, 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 put Duterte under control so he doesn't become a runaway Marcos type of leader. So Duterte now is in a quandary whether he's going to go through with his scheme of fascist dictatorship or um, allow the uh, 2022 presidential elections, uh, but he will use the, he will cheat, he will rig the vote count to make uh, his daughter the uh, president. I see. Uh, thank you uh, for that, Tito. I think uh, it's the fifth question that we've answered. And um, Sigur, let's have a, uh, we're just going to plug in uh, the foreign language press for you, Tito, to have a quick break and uh, rest your voice for uh, for a second. So um, anyway, for anyone, for all the viewers and our watchers who are interested in studying more and reading more, um, you can attain and you can avail um, uh, publishing, you know, Marxist, Leninist, and Maoist published books on the foreign language press. You no, know? you could visit. Um, you could visit their website, of course, foreignlanguage.press, to see their uh, the collection um, of books that they sell, and uh, uh, also, um, sorry, and also you could you could log on to flfpress.storenv.com so you can order there it's uh, it's th they really sell cheap books like uh, ranging from $5 to $10 um, delivering nationwide so again visit flpress.storenv.com and um, and uh, avail your books now and read 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 marxism leninism and maoism ayon so again Tito, uh, continuing para sa ating question and answer portion. Unfortunately, we have already closed our question and answer floor as we have a lot of questions come in for Tito Jo. Ano, we have um, six left for Tito to answer. Uh, Tito, next question. What is the relation between po nationalism and internationalism? Uh, nationalism can be treated in a positive way. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, uh, it simply means that you are assertive of your nationhood, your national sovereignty and independence, because uh, you have a whole history of colonial in, explo uh, exploitation, uh, uh, history of imperialist uh, domination, and there are always the neo-colonial ways of dominating even a supposedly uh, free country. So uh, if you look at the term, uh, if you are going to be strict with regard to the meaning of, uh, um, of nationalism in the flow of history, especially world history, nationalism is, uh, arose as bourgeois nationalism. And when it arose, it was a good thing. No? Bourgeois nationalism arose in order to uh, inspire the building of nations against imperial, against feudal empires, and also against uh, colonial and then imperialist domination. So, um, why bourgeois nationalism in the case of, let's say, in Europe, uh, when there were feudal empires um, and trying to tax, uh, you know, the movement of goods and the taxing so the bourgeoisie so many times, you know? Um, it was bourgeois because the, 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 the merchants want to be secure. They want, uh, uh, they want to pay only one tax. And uh, 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 so um, bourgeois nationalism arose with the formation of the European states. Uh, and in the case of uh, countries dominated by colonialism of, in, or imperialism, bourgeois nationalism is positive. And then when the proletariat had already arisen as a significant class on a world scale, um, then um, uh, 
uh, when the preference of the progressive would be to use anti-imperialism, but they do not. Uh, unlike the Trotskyites, uh, and the communists will not just de denounce the bourgeois nationalists, the bourgeois national bourgeoisie, because uh, in so the, because they are anti-imperialist to some extent. But the uh, the um, uh, communists would be careful in avoiding the term bourgeois nationalism to, to be ascribed to them because they are, first of all, internationalists. No? Mm -hmm. they, they, of course, they know that the proletariat has to operate and make revolution within, uh, within uh, the borders of particular countries. But um, um, they, they, they do not like the narrow-mindedness of the bourgeoisie yeah. eh, in asserting uh, uh, national sovereignty. So, um, uh, the spirit, national, you know, uh, a country may be capitalist eh? um, uh, or socialist. In either case, self-respecting or assertive of their nationhood, no? Against, uh, you know, uh, foreign entities that uh, do damage to them. So, um, but... Uh, a socialist, a socialist state will not use the term nationalism to ascribe to its um, uh, spirit and drive to maintain uh, national sovereignty in the world in, in a world of uh, states. No, mm -hmm. um, it will simply say national sovereignty uh, and, and allow the national bourgeoisie uh, to use the term nationalism, but. Um, I remember that in the 1950s and 1960s, because of the anti-communist uh, campaign in the Cold War, uh, Marxists in the Philippines uh, used what they called the Aesopian, uh, Aesop's language. Mm -hmm. They use alternative terms uh, in order to, uh, in order not to allow uh, the red daggers, eh, the witch hunters. Uh, to pounce on them as communists, no? So, uh, uh, Dean Jose Lansang was uh, very um, uh, emphatic about the use of nationalism to mean eh? national sovereignty from the communist viewpoint. No? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that was flexibility in language. Oh, and if you will, if you will read my struggle for national democracy, uh, in the, ori the original uh, uh, text of the, the speeches I delivered, I would use nationalism because mm -hmm. uh, I was using the, the Aesopian language. You know? uh, I was um, um, I was lessening the possibility of the witch hunters from pouncing on me, you know, as someone culpable for violation of the anti-subversion law. You know, there was punishment uh, before anti-subversion law in 1960. Um, 67 that was enacted. Um, so, um, in Europe, uh, when you are called a bourgeois nationalist, they can uh, easily jump from that point to make calling you a fascist. No, oh, it's well. different. No, <laughs> so, uh, but it is a it's a it's a, a legitimate and clean term to refer to the sense of nationhood uh, from the bourgeois viewpoint. And it, uh, as I have pointed out, uh, um, uh, it is it is it is good in the sense of being anti-feudal, anti-colonial, and anti-imperialist. Uh, but oh. the Marxist will not would not uh, want to be called a nationalist because it carries the new ones of bourgeois. Uh, you are bourgeois if you are a nationalist. Oh, oh. Uh, you would rather, if you were a communist, you would rather be called a proletarian internationalist or a proletarian fighter or simply a communist, not a nationalist. Because oh. in the history of Asia, too, no, Kuomintang oh. was nationalist. No? Mm -hmm. Sukarno, who, who was caught in the middle between the right and, um, uh, and the left, used to be called, uh, who used to be, to call himself nationalist. And in the classical, in classical alliances, anti-colonial alliances, say in India, Indonesia and other Islamic countries, you had the combination before the anti-colonial combination of this, of the uh, 
the communists, the bourgeois nationalists, and the Islamists. No? Mm -hmm. uh, until the U.S. was able to break that down with uh, uh, its promotion of uh, Islamic uh, fundamentalism. Uh, Islamic fundamentalism was a creation practically of the U.S. Uh, imperialism. And then this would be converted into false jihadists, no? mm -hmm. uh, like the Al-Qaeda uh, and down to Islamic State. These are all creations of, uh, of U.S. imperialism. And um, anyway, <laughs> that's my moving father afield. No? Oh, po. Ayun nga. Uh, Tito, next question naman. Uh, I think it has di been discussed by uh, of you uh, every, from the, this discussion, ano, uh, from the Q&A part. And sabi niya, uh, are there other socialist countries that we can stand in solidarity with? I think I've already mentioned yeah. countries that uh, claim to be socialist, like uh, the PRK, uh, uh, Cuba, uh, uh, Venezuela, Bolivia. Uh, there are solidarity relations between progressive Filipino organizations and their own organizations. And uh, there are also events where... Uh, the officials of the this uh, as, uh, of the governments of these uh, countries uh, um, relate to uh, delegations of uh, Filipinos, mm -hmm. and um, I say they claim, you know, but uh, by some measure they have some social socialist characteristics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, they are the most that you have now after the after the big socialist countries uh, like the Soviet Union and uh, China are gone. Mm -hmm. I see. All right, I think we can now proceed Tito Susan and the question after that. No. So, um, next question naman is who do we stand in who do we stand with in cases where a non-socialist government is under attack by an imperialist, for example, like in Iran or in Syria? Well, if a country, whatever its uh, character is, its uh, social character or ideological character, deserves to be supported if attacked by the imperialists. And, um, of course, uh, uh, the, uh, the Iranian government considers itself socialist, you know? Islamic socialist or Syria, they have they, this Ba'ath type uh, of socialism. But anyway... Uh, whether you consider them non-socialist or um, by some um, on some account socialist, they deserve to be supported. If attack any country, uh, whatever it is, if it is under attack by imperialism, deserves support. And mm -hmm. of course, uh, the, the revolutionary with foresight would expect that uh, with among the people of a country under attack by imperialism, the revolutionary forces would arise precisely because of the attacks being made by imperialism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, proceeding to the next question, ano, um, uh, this question is, you mentioned that the new democratic revolution has diplomatic relations with other governments. What were these relations in the past? Are any governments friendly to the new democratic movement today? Well, I have already mentioned relations, and uh, uh, when you say past, when well, it can be yesterday, but uh, it can be that uh, that uh, recent. Uh, but I will mention to you, it's no secret that uh, the uh, 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 Philippine Communist Party had a uh, delegation, the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Philippines had a delegation in Beijing. So it was a party-to-party -party type of a relationship, but at the same time, um, it, it, uh, there is some aspect, diplomatic aspect. When the NDF make arrangements with foreign governments regarding peace negotiations, that's, uh, that's, that can be described as having a proto-diplomatic or diplomatic character, uh, because the National Democratic Front can represent the people's government. Uh, aside from representing its own allied organizations. So it can represent the organs of political power that can be summed up as a, the People's Democratic Government in the Philippines. So the Philippine, re, Filipino revolutionaries have had diplomatic relations, uh, and in, in some cases you can be prudent, say, proto-diplomatic. 
But at the same time, there is the diplomatic element when the, the government or government agencies uh, in other countries would deal with you uh, as uh, representing also the organs of political power uh, that are based in the countryside of the Philippines. I see. I see. Tito, uh, proceeding to the next question, sabi po, uh, can we use the U.S. to force China to dismantle the structures at the West Philippine Sea? Yes, that can, there is a lot that can be done by the Philippines. Uh, uh, things that uh, uh, are being sh uh, shunted uh, by, by, that being pushed out by Duterte. You know, Duterte says, oh, China will go to war if uh, you offend, if you don't allow China to keep the islands it has uh, made, no? And in effect, uh, he, he's saying those things. Uh, and he says he doesn't mind if uh, China will only fish but he will only get angry when uh, China uh, begins to exploit the mineral resources. You know, that's, those are statements of a traitor and a, and a stupid fool. Um, sure. Now, these are the things that the Philippines can do. Um, the Philippines can, um, can push a resolution in the UN General Assembly mm -hmm. um, uh, to get a resolution condemning China's violation of the UN uh, convention on the law of the sea and on the and violation of the 2016 judgment of the permanent court of arbitration. China is a is a an outlaw, a violator of international law in that regard. And um, this has a moral force. If you get a resolution, just like Nicaragua being able to get uh, a resolution against the U.S. Huh? Uh, in the UN Security Council, and it's, uh, because China is one of the permanent members, uh, it's quite difficult. Now, this is another thing you can do. You can, there are UN bodies and international courts where you can sue China uh, for um, uh, uh, destroying the marine environment, uh, for... Uh, 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 occupying without permission the uh, uh, the artificial islands uh, it, it has created for military purposes and um, uh, for uh, uh, damaging the environment you know? uh, and uh, uh, occupying uh, areas that uh, uh, without paying rent you no know? so um, it, the China and its corporations have assets in certain countries like the U.S. and in Europe. Uh, it, when the Philippines win a case before an international court, it can get the payment, the compensation from um, from um, those. Uh, uh, you can garnish the assets, and you know the. Uh, Beneficiaries in the uh, human rights case against Marcos, uh, they could, um, uh, they were able to um, force the Swiss government and the Swiss bank to um, uh, to put them to put the money ill-gotten by Marcos uh, to Singapore and eventually to the Philippines um, because. Um, uh, well, uh, that can be done. When you have a ruling, court ruling, uh, you can uh, use the ruling to, uh, in case uh, compensation has to be paid, uh, uh, there is a way of, uh, of getting compensation. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are a lot of things uh, that you can do. The resolution, by the way, from the UN General Assembly is, uh, is um, uh, important in establishing the violation of law by China and in making a ground for the withdrawal of China uh, from the West Philippine Sea. Uh, then you have the other uh, cases that you can make in order to uh, claim damages for uh, to the environment and to, you know, uh, occupation of uh, uh, what belongs to the Philippines. So uh, now you have a crazy president. He says, oh, I'm afraid China will make, wage war. No, China is afraid of making war because 
uh, it is also afraid to be destroyed by uh, by the U.S. There is mutual, you know, in this nuclear age, there is mutual uh, uh, there is mutual fear of uh, mutual destruction, mutually assured destruction, and um, uh, the uh, China and U.S. can be allowed to fight like wolves, you know, among themselves. At the same time, the Philippines look after its own interests. That's the way how um, the Philippines may even benefit from the from the quarrel of the dogs or the wolves. You know, uh, it does not even have to uh, uh, to be a slave, a puppet of one or the the two in order to uh, uh, to have any kind of uh, uh, any kind of blessing or any kind of reward. You no, know? uh, the Philippines. Uh, um, has the bad uh, fortune, has the ill fortune of being led by puppets who uh, who cannot think beyond their selfish interest, and they cannot think in terms of uh, the interest of the sovereign Filipino people. Oh, I see. And Tito, we are now down to our last question. Ano? Thank you for everyone who've participated, and thank you for your interactiveness in sending out their questions and um, sending your greetings for our first anniversary through our comment section. Last question, Tito, from the audience. Um, what do you think, Tito, about uh, Huey P. Newton's theory of revolutionary intercommunalism? Well, if you have uh, revolutionary communities, whatever of whatever racial uh, uh, characteristic, uh, mm -hmm. uh, they can uh, they can coordinate against the common enemy. So uh, that's the positive aspect of uh, in revolutionary intercommunalism and uh, the p assumption that there is a community or, uh, uh, that is the basis of the uh, revolutionary movement. That's good because uh, uh, that recognizes the decisiveness of the people as a revolutionary force. And um, people of different communities, uh, uh, can unite and uh, coordinate against the common enemy. Ayun. Thank you so much, Tito, for discussing uh, internationalism to us. Um, and thank you, everyone, for um, joining the discussion. I know we are, uh, thank you so much for celebrating our first anniversary through, of course, any other way by studying with us. Ayun po. Ano, um, again, since it's already one year of ND Line Online, you could watch previous episodes of ND Line Online on our Facebook page, Anakbayan Europa. Um, it, it is, um, you could uh, visit the video tab of our page and you can see all our episodes of ND Line posted in there. And if you don't have uh, Facebook or you don't prefer watching on Facebook, um, many episodes are posted through Tito Jomas' YouTube uh, page. It's Jomas, uh, just visit uh, youtube.com slash Jomas Season. So, uh, ayun, you could watch the previous episodes there and learn from there. Ano, uh, and share it to your families and friends and uh, use it for your as a reference for future discussion. Ayan. Again, thank you so much. Abangan ulit uh, ang ating uh, susunod na episode. W um, watch out for our next episode. That will be on next Sunday. That is on May 2nd, 2021. And catch the updates on our Facebook page again, Anak Bayan Europa, or uh, on our Facebook group, ND Line Online. Ayun po. At uh, isa na naman uh, episode ng ND Line Online ang natapos kasama ang uh, ating uh, paboritong professor na si Tito Joma. Tito, uh, before we close our episode, do you have any messages before our before we end? Thank you uh, for uh, this opportunity uh, of being with you and uh, exchanging ideas. Uh, we uh, grow together and we try to make uh, the same revolutionary movement stronger than ever. Ayan. Thank you. Ayan. Thank you, Tito. Anyway, uh, ayun, before I close, we would just like to plug um, on May 1, May 1st, 2021, um, Kagaba Kababayans and Comrades in United Kingdom, we would have a march protest. Ano, you know, march has won for May 1. Migrants protest against Duterte's inaction and tyranny. That would be on May 1st, 2021, 3 p.m. British summertime. On Philippine Embassy, postcode would be SW1Y. 
4HG. So, samahan niyo po kami magmarcha upang kondenahin ang inaksyon at tiranya ng uh, pasistang rehimen ni Duterte at makisa sa ating laban. Ayan po. Um, so, uh, yan. So, muli maraming salamat sa ating uh, sa pakikibahagi. Ako po si Kasamang Christ. Kasama po si Prof. Joma Season mapagpalayang hapon po para sa ating lahat.